This meeting will be called to order. Will everyone please join me in the pledge of the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two, approval of the minutes for January 18, 2011, and January 27, 2011, regular meeting. I'll move. I'll second. Motion's on the floor to approve the minutes. Is there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we exchange number three and four, make the public comments, Roman numeral three, personnel hearing, Roman numeral four so that the public will have a chance to address us before we get on to the other business. I'll second that motion. motion's been made to switch the items. Is there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the motion carries. All right, public comments. Timmy Atkins. Timmy, would you want to come? Thank you for your time. Uh, first of all, I want to make one thing very clear, okay? I'm president of Duval Youth Baseball League. We play at Duval Elementary Middle School. Um, this is not a personal attack on anybody. We have some serious health concerns um, because I am down there from approximately 11 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock in the evening on Sundays with our youth basketball league. I've personally seen it myself. I've coached down here six out of the last seven years. Um, as of from, Miss Clayton has been good work with us, okay? From the fall of 2009 until January of this year. Now we cannot get any answers as a league. Um, I am responsible for 164 kids, approximately, in this youth basketball league. With the uh, roaches in the school, they're climbing on the walls, they're climbing in the bleachers during the games. I mean, it's not like they're hiding through while we're there. They're right out and wide open in the bathrooms, the sinks, everything. Um, we have not played the last two weeks because of school spraying. I appreciate that. The, uh, they're actually now, a month later, trying to address it. Um, my concerns are we need to know what, if we're going to be able to play down there. Um, is it safe for us to go in that school after they spray it on a Saturday? I don't know. Um, is proper cleanup taken up? taken care of after they do spray. Um, we just can't seem to get answers as a league. Uh, we cannot wait till Saturday morning to try to call 164 kids to cancel our games. Um, I personally took this to Ms. Clayton in, on January 2nd. Um, I asked her, I pulled her to the side. She was at the school that day, inside the school. Uh, we do everything she wants us to do. We don't allow anybody in the school. Um, we clean up before we have our games. We clean up after we have our games. The gymnasium and everything is actually cleaner when we leave on Sunday night than what it is when we get there on Friday. Half the time, the toiletries in the boys' locker room don't work. Commode does not flush half the time. The urinal leaks into the floor. Um, and these are all sanitary issues. If I have 164 kids down there and if one of them gets sick, that's on my shoulders. Um, and so uh, we're asking for help with this as a league. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to provide a safe environment for these kids, a clean environment. Um, some of these parents and our board members are down there all day long. We have children ourselves. It is at the point where I, 
I've got a six-year-old and eight-year-old. I do not want my children down there, okay, if they're spraying, if they're not cleaning up, is there a residue on the floor? Uh, these kids dive after basketballs and everything else. They wipe the floor. Is it going to get in their face? They wipe their face? I don't know. Uh, and these are safety concerns that as a league president, I feel it's my responsibility to get answers to. My, I've had board members talk to Miss Clayton. I cannot go down there every day. Uh, I attempted for four hours one day to contact her on the phone for, other, for various reasons. She couldn't talk to me on the phone. I asked for her to call me back. The next morning she had a secretary call me back. I started asking these questions to the secretary. She couldn't answer. So um, we're not making any headway as a league. Uh, and the, I'm at a point where I don't know whether to cancel Duval Youth Basketball League completely, uh, whether um, try to play some of our games at the Lane County High School. We've talked to the vice principal over there, but there's only certain dates we can get in over there. Um, but then you're, you're asking parents to drive over an hour for a 15, 20 minute game. Uh, is that fair to the parents? Uh, I don't know. A lot of parents are willing to do it, but you know, this is not Hamlin Youth Basketball League. This is Duval Youth Basketball League. We should be playing our games in Duval. Um, and if there's any way we can get answers to this, I would de desperately appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Adams. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, your concerns are our concerns as well. Mr. Roach, would you like to address? Uh, I have just one question. Mr. Adams, when did you uh, first start trying to get the answers that you were sharing tonight about the Spray. There has been communication, uh, attempted communication with Miss Clayton since the first issue of January 2nd. When I, when I personally told her about the roaches in the gym, she said, I know and we're taking care of it. Three weeks later, we quit selling anything at our concession stand for the fact we could not, uh, it was actually uh, two weeks from that day. We we would we quit selling the food because we cannot guarantee we can keep the sand there. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we was down there one day just setting up. Ten minutes after we put our table out to sell pot and candy bars, there was roaches crawling on the table. Um, she would not give direct answers. Uh, some of her answers has been I don't know. Uh, it's not her responsibility. Various answers. Of which I'm sure you will hear more of that as more people speak. But uh, even the spray itself, you asked that recently, and uh, there was that has been asked over the past week and a half, um, a couple of different times. Okay, uh, thank you, um, President Matthews. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Dan Smith here tonight. Uh, I heard about the problem and knew that we would have a delegation from Duval and I asked him to come tonight because he's the one that knows the most about it. So, uh, Mr. Smith, would you be able to address what yes. you have to share with us tonight? Glad to. Please. I have a uh, list of activities that we have done at Duval. I have a policy. I have a list of things that the, the exterminator has been there. I was unaware of the Duval Basketball League issues. I didn't know. I did not know they were not allowed to play. Do you have any extra copies? I've got a couple. I'd like to give Mr. Adams more. I'll oh, sure. I'll oh, sure. To answer one of your critical questions, uh, the re-entry period is four to eight hours. Of course, it depends on the type of chemical they're using and the manufacturer's recommendations. So, uh, most of, if you look on page two, the list of uh, the exterminating company's uh, activities, most of the chemicals used were level three which would normally indicate four hours, which is one reason we uh, did our chemical spraying during 
Saturday because I knew about the Buddy League on Sunday, and 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 it really I, I can't explain why Mrs. Uh, Clayton did not want you to play in there. As far as people sliding on the gym floor, they don't spray the middle of the floor. They spray around cracks in the edges under bleachers. Nobody's going to be sliding under there on a you you know on a normal no, basis. But, no, but if a kid slides after a baseball and slides up against the wall, uh, or it, it, and I'm not. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, David. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is concerns because I don't want any child getting sick down there. Uh, your chief, your child, has played down there. Yeah. Well, and that's so the reason yeah. I didn't know you weren't allowed to play because mine have well, gone, she, both gone to middle school. So she, I, I was unaware. She's gave us a 24-hour no entry, a 48-hour no entry, um, okay. and believe me, I'm all for her being safe. But you know, I mean, and this is all information. To, we cannot get. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to give that to you. Yeah, we're, we're if he'll address it, and then what we don't get tonight, uh, my secretary keeps good notes, shorthand. So what we don't get tonight, we'll find the answers for you. The the, the area in the gym, like I said, is under the bleachers, and where I don't know if you set up concession at the same place the middle school does or not. I've not yeah. been down there. Yeah, we if did. it's in the same place. Now they have sprayed along that wall if uh, if you would look at the area we put some new boards down some new baseboards yeah we caulked some holes yeah. maintenance department has done all that excuse me mr smith i want to uh, have you direct to the board on going well, i was over trying to this. get over here to where i, I know i know and that's okay but, but address the board with the issues yeah. that you know about okay and mr adkins has a copy what you don't address then we're going to have to find out but I'd at least like the board to have um, of what has been done so we can okay. accurately assess at least what we've done and what we haven't done, then okay. I'm I'll ready to do I'll more. just go through my list. Uh, the, the spraying, again, has been done on Saturdays. Um, the areas that have uh, been sprayed, you only spray the areas that uh, have infestations, which has been the gym area, locker rooms, uh, some of the restrooms in the school, the cafeteria, the kitchen, storage, storage areas, the fan room, and mechanical rooms. Uh, they're going to continue to spray on Saturdays uh, until the problem is resolved. Uh, I walked through the help with the health department uh, today, and. Uh, we saw two roaches that were alive, but they were on their back and kicking for their last breath. So uh, we didn't find uh, a lot of live activity, uh, activity today from the roaches. So uh, he's very, the health department's very pleased with our efforts. He's he thinks that we we're getting the problem under control. He's going to continue to go weekly to the school. Um, Custodians have done some, uh, we've approved uh, overtime for the custodians to do some additional cleaning in the problem areas. You, you mentioned the fact that do we clean a certain amount of hours after the spray has been down? No, it's residual, so, and, and I've talked to the health department and the exterminating company, uh, you're kind of defeating your purposes if you go in there and mop it up. Uh, I mean, you want the roaches to get on it. But like I said, it's not going to be in an area that a kid should be on the floor to start with. And we're looking at four to eight hours re-entry. And to my knowledge, I believe she made a good decision on spraying on Saturdays. I don't know of any any activities. I know the middle school hasn't been playing on Saturday. The, the buddy league, as you mentioned, plays on Sunday. So to my knowledge, she's made good decisions on when when to do this treatment. Um, we've put uh, rubber seals on some exterior doors. Um, like I said, we put new baseboards down, repaired some uh, damaged wood. Um, I mean, we've done everything that is within the policy that we're supposed to do. They've done crack and crevice treatments. They, they monitor the situation monthly. And then, depending on the population, they decide at that point how to treat, because you don't want to spray if it's unnecessary. 
Uh, um, uh, just one more thing. Uh, one thing I do want to make completely clear today, I don't want anybody to feel this is a personal attack because I don't want Ms. Clayton to have, or the Board of Education to have direct <coughs> issues with this youth basketball league. Okay, this is for the children of this county. And, you know, it's not a personal issue from a league standpoint. Okay. That's right. It just it, she has to be brought in because she is the principal. Right. She is the one that, uh, and I'm gonna say allegedly because she's not here, but hasn't um, either communicated or answered your questions fully due to her lack of knowledge. Is that correct? Pretty much, um, Laura. Uh, as that, that's uh, pretty much answers you've been getting. She don't know, right? Yeah. Hey, Laura is also one of the board members on the youth basketball league, and. She lives close to the school. She's, uh, her children go to that school. And I live on Allen Creek Inn, and I cannot run down there every day and try to talk to her. Um, and so I have to rely on my other board members for help because one person cannot do it all. And, um, and Dana, um, ain't, I can give you my person, my home phone number. You know, if you find out more, if you, if you please communicate with me. Uh, you know, these kids that's in this basketball league is my number one concern. I don't want any of them getting sick or anything. And um, before I sit down, I would like to say one thing, okay? I appreciate what you're doing to try to fix the problem. But at the same time, the, my personal, personal opinion away from this basketball league is how did this get in this position? It should not be this bad. If it's, if it's this bad in the uh, gymnasium. What's it like where the kids eat? If you walk into a restaurant, I, I mean, I'm, I, this is for all of you to think about. If you walk into a restaurant, you see roaches crawling on the walls. Are you going to let your family eat there? Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, <clears throat> next delegation will be uh, Laura Farrell. Um. This is concerning a roach infestation, obviously. Um, I'd like to start just reading briefly what I have as far as documentation. We did speak with Mrs. Clayton, which that would be Tim Atkins and myself, um, on Sunday, January 2nd. Um, we explained to her that we were, uh, there, there were multiple roaches on the walls and tables in the gym. She told us she was aware of the problem and it was being taken care of. Okay, on February 4th, which was this past Friday, Mrs. Clayton told myself and my husband that she had the school sprayed on January 5th this year. There was no prior notification about this spraying. There is in place a 24-hour notification to all school employees and parents for level three and four treatment. So if the school was actually sprayed on January 5th, uh, we as parents and I guess school employees were not notified of this spraying, okay? Um, I'll back up back into January. On January 24th, I contacted the health department in Lincoln County in hopes to speak with Joe Huff, who is the acting sanitarian. He was not available. Also, on January 24th, I contacted Fred Barley with Environmental Health he, and explained the seriousness of the infestation. He contacted Joe Huff and also the district sanitarian and requested an inspection. This inspection, as you all know, or may not know, was conducted on the same day, January 24th, in the presence of Kim Clayton, Dana Smith, Jimmy Lovejoy, Joe Huff, and I'm assuming Ryan Harbison, which is the district sanitarian. And I believe he came from St. Albans. Um, through the findings, I spoke again with, he told me he would follow up with me with the findings. I spoke with Fred, Fred Barley again on January 27th. Uh, during that conversation, he read the health department report to me um, pertaining to the inspection. Uh, this report stated that the problem was found with both the exterminating company and Mrs. Clayton. Uh, to explain the treatment was not, was not effective and Mrs. Clayton was not taking alternative methods to get uh, the infestation under control. Uh, it's my understanding that there were both live and dead roaches in the gym behind bleachers, both the locker, uh, locker room, bathrooms in the gym, there were large cracks in the walls. Roaches were also found in the science room, in the cafeteria, behind the milk cooler, and dishwashing area. 
where these children, over 600 children, it wouldn't even matter if it was one child, are served and eating lunch five days a week. Five days a week is where the exterior door in the food stock room was in poor condition. The room, the report indicated multiple areas of live and dead roaches throughout. Uh, the questions that I have for you are, you know, obviously what specific action is being taken based on the health department report um, and what treatment plan is established. Uh, and I'd also like the documentation for the plan. The other question I have, how thorough was the inspection concerning uh, the school, um, considering it was conducted during school hours? Were all the rooms inspected? The lockers, the bathrooms, and the modular buildings, were they inspected? And what conditions were they in? Um, the roaches are still being seen by children and adults that are there. Some will not come forth, but they do speak outside of school for whatever reason. Uh, that shows that the treatments are not effective, are not effective enough in a, in a timely manner. Are the chemicals even strong enough to resolve the problem and how safe are they for the children for this continued spraying every weekend? What is the residual effect of this chemical? Uh, my last question, who is accountable for the negligence of such an infestation and is there a policy for such disciplinary action? Because that's what we're asking for. We're asking for accountability. I don't really know who, who, you know, I'm not trying to place blame, but as a mother, and I think many other parents feel the same way I do, when you send your child to school, you, you expect a healthy environment. They're there to learn. They need to be in the best possible environment, healthy environment they can be in. I certainly don't feel good about sending my children to school there any day of the week. And I won't for quite some time until I know this has been taken care of. I feel like this is not a new problem. I know for a fact school employees have known about it for quite some time. Why the issue has not been addressed, I don't know. It's very disconcerting to me and I am absolutely angry about this situation because there are health risks and health concerns involved <coughs> with roaches. They carry many diseases, not because they are nasty bugs, but because what they travel through. And you take these little children that are innocent and they're only doing what they're told when they line up in that cafeteria to sit down with a lunch tray that is served where there have been roaches found in a dishwashing area. And they are to sit down with that tray and eat that food where there have roaches, been roaches crawling on this. Roaches coming out of the locker where these children touch their books and probably wipe their hands on their face. I'm, I'm sure there needs to be an explanation for the unsanitary conditions. I also have pictures if anyone is interested to see uh, the way the water fountains look, um, the soap dispensers in the bathrooms, the girls' bathroom in the hallway in the school. And if I were permitted to be in the school anymore, I could get more pictures. She will not allow parents in the school for whatever reason, I'm not sure of. But I'm sure if we could get in there, maybe even getting an independent sanitarian to come in and do, conduct his own inspection and, and, and check out his findings, that might be of interest. I'm sure some parents might would agree with that. Mm -hmm. But those are the questions I have, and I feel like I, you know, maybe speaking for most parents here, maybe parents that couldn't even make it tonight, we, you know, I'd like these questions, you know, answered. And I, I, I'm just very angry over the, the, the issue. I don't want to send my, I'd like to transfer my children. It is, it's disgusting. It absolutely is disgusting. And these children are better than that. Any child is better than that. You wouldn't, like Tim said, you wouldn't go to a restaurant if you know roaches had been crawling on your plate. Would you send your child there? You wouldn't. But we have to do it every day. Every day, these children are in this environment. And it doesn't seem like it's a big concern to anyone. And that's, you know, I'm trying to raise awareness to the parents that don't know, that haven't been in the school, and haven't been made aware. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Laura, I think, uh, I just want to say something. You know, I have four children that, that are in the school, um, and, and I do agree with you. I mean, uh, I think there's, you know, I think that we are in agreement with a lot of things. As far as the treatment plan, I think I can speak on this. We do have a treatment plan, and that was passed out, and it was gave you know that, that Dana sent out. That's the treatment plan for the uh, for Lincoln County. Um, as far as um, inspecting during school hours, we could actually have the school inspected um, well, after hours. Right. Am I correct? Yeah. We can have the school inspected after hours if we need. Yes. Yeah, that wouldn't be a problem at all. 
Dana can take care of that. <coughs> These are the yeah, here's some pictures department. I would Please. like for everyone to look at just to get a visual of Thanks. the conditions of the bathroom that these children use every single day. And the water fountain, and, and if you look at the picture of the water fountain, if we had blown a picture up, you would notice in the water fountain that's actually a roach leg laying in the water fountain basin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I guess Dana, how did it get in this shape? My question. Right. Is, well, are we have a problem with the. Uh, uh, you have problems in all the schools. One well, I understand or that. You got a lot, the school environment, you get a lot of deliveries with boxes, cardboard boxes, which they love. They love the glue and cardboard. They love pop, as uh, somebody mentioned a while ago. Um, glue and sugar, things like that, they really, they love it. And, with the situation at Duval where they got infested in the gym, it's very difficult with the cafeteria being so far away from the gym that it's difficult for administration to say, hey, we're not going to eat in this gym. So it gets under the bleachers, it gets in the gym, it's difficult to clean up in the gym. There's been times where administrators have said, no, we're not going to allow food in the gym. But it's, it's difficult and it's an inconvenience to people. And, and it's just a trade-off. They won't. They won't uh, stay where there's no food and water. They're kind of like me. They like. They like to eat. And drink. But the point of the matter is, these are children, innocent children that don't know better. They don't know not to touch something that roaches may have been on or laid eggs on. More importantly, my daughter told me that the soap, the the paper towel dispenser in the girls' bathroom, she wants to dry her hands. Two roaches crawled out of the paper towel dispenser. Okay. And they dry their hands on that. You know, it's not a trade-off. This is the children's health and well-being that we're concerned with. This is a school system, and that is the top priority with the school system, is the children's education, health, and well-being. And I feel like, as a school system, we need to step it up. The, the exterminators are reluctant at times to do, I guess, the extreme. They, they, they prefer not to use chemicals at all because the Department of Agriculture has these rules and regulations so they're trying not to get in trouble by doing more than is absolutely necessary to control the population and sometimes that causes them to get worse before they get there. Mr. Better. Smith, I think the issue is that uh, you know, I don't think there's any disagreement that we need to eliminate the roaches. If it's food, we eliminate the food in the gym, period. If concession stand causing a problem, we eliminate concession stands. Academics come first. And the children's safety has got to be the number one priority. So we eliminate things that we know that are caused, at least until we eradicate the roaches. Then we can bring it back and hopefully with better, I guess, uh, cleanup or whatever it may require. But I think uh, what Ms. Farrell is simply asking is a question I think the board and everyone in here wants, and that's just elimination of the roaches. So I'm assuming you'll get with, if you have to change, uh, I don't know who we use, but if they're not productive and we need to change extermination people, then we need to do that. I'm just saying, you know, we're hearing everything, so we just need to fix it. Period. I, I believe the exterminating company over the last month has been very productive in the room. And I know the health department, his name is, I know Joe, is it Huff? Yes. And he's working with you. Yes. What would um, prevent us from having uh, kind of like daily inspections so that we can somehow assure the parents that, uh, you know, it's in good shape versus once a week or every two weeks, whatever it is now. You can do daily inspections. With the experts being not like me, but um, well, I, I, can, I can attempt to do that. But I can go every day. Uh, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can go every I'm day. I'm sure the health department will need and a notification of anything that we spray. You're saying that, that what we had sprayed on most of the times, level two is on level, level three is required notification. Uh, 
what she's told me that she's done is notify through the call school messenger school messenger system yeah. that was that was done this past friday yes. that was the first time that was done was this past friday but but anyway go that's ahead. how i was told she was doing the notification now there's other ways of doing it uh, there's I've got two form letters there's one letter that you can send out at the beginning of school year asking employees whether they want to be notified or not which is the easiest way to do it because if uh, Mr. Agnes wants to be notified he fills out the form and that's the only person that she would have to notify if she doesn't send that form out and get response back then she has to notify with a letter, that a form letter that I've got for her to send out to every child and give out to all of her uh, school uh, staff. Uh, the Richard. easiest way, of course, is to find out who wants to be notified and only notify those people. That's why I assume that she's using School Messenger and sending out letters because she didn't do that. Mr. Smith, <coughs> could you work with Mr. Smith and Ms. Clayton on the communication part, please? Mr. Uh, Adkins, going back, I have one question. If communication uh, had occurred with you from the get-go, would you be here tonight? Um, not as late, crazy. I'm but talking about it. It's communication and here's what's being done, so forth, so forth, and so forth. Would you be here or not? Yes, I would. Because okay. uh, this is a, a concern. Uh, my main intention tonight was because I knew a lot of parents was coming. I do not want this league to get a bad name. I don't want this league to get blamed for this. I don't think we did not bring the roaches in. Yeah. Um, but as a concerned parent, my kids will be going to this school in two years. They're going to Midway Elementary. Midway Elementary is an old school. And I'm in that school several times a week. They don't have this issue. We're not about in our school. Miss Farrell. Yes. If you would have good communication, proper communication, would you be here today? I certainly would. Due to the fact of the negligence, it's just blatant negligence, and it's very makes me very angry. Due to the fact there is no more thought taken for these children. It's okay to put up a fence. It's okay to want to buy these things and hold this position, you have to follow through with the position. And I think this should have been on top of the priority list. And I feel like it has fallen to the very bottom. And I think it's been swept under the rug. The less that know about it, the better. Once it got exposed, then it started getting attention. Before that, this problem wasn't getting any attention. So there were over 600 children going to a school five days a week and it infested with roaches. You know, I just wonder if parents started thinking about the illnesses their children are coming home with and recurring sicknesses. Maybe they should go to the doctor and get some of this documented and say, hey, we may have, maybe we have something here. Maybe, Somebody you know, start talking. respiratory problems, exactly. too. Exactly. I mean, my Our children are just as important as the children to, anywhere else. I need to, we have to move on with our next person. Um, Missy Brogan. Uh, um, I guess they've covered a lot of what I was discussing. I guess if there are so many roaches in the school and they are treating them and killing them, what are we doing with the roaches? I mean, we're talking about the cleanup. Right. We're not going to clean up the pesticide because it needs to stick around and finish killing. Right. But if there's that many roaches, where, how are we cleaning up that many roaches? If we're bringing the kids in less than 12 hours later, if they're trying to have leave less than 24 hours later, if we're bringing our kids back to school. Ms. Smith, do you, you know how that happens? Uh, that may be why... Uh, Mrs. Clayton has suspended uh, the basketball league temporarily because the they've the been kids? coming in on Monday morning. The custodian gets in there before students arrive and she sweeps up some of the... A custodian? The, We're talking about cracks, crevices underneath the floorboards, in between the walls. This is where roaches stay. For everyone you see, you have any idea how many are in the walls or but underneath She can the only clean up the dead ones that And now sees. these are breaking down and... Our kids are now exposed not only to the pesticides, but the breakdown of the roaches that are left behind. Welcome. I myself had a child out for a week. They can't tell me for sure, but she has an infection in both of her eyes, and no one can tell me what caused it. We've tried five different antibiotics that can't get rid of it. You know, 
this is our kids' one chance to get an education, and I think they deserve better than that. I think I deserve the right to have your attention when I'm speaking. I'm sorry, ma'am. I was talking to him about a, a solution to the problem. Go ahead. Uh, let's move to my next concern, then, lack of communication. Mm -hmm. Um, you can call down at that school and I think they was told, I was point blank last week told that I was not allowed in that school, the same school that both my children were in, mm -hmm. yep. because they didn't want parents yes. in the hallways. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. I was That's informed true. by the secretary when I got to the door to sign in that Miss Clayton specifically told them not to allow any parents in the school. She did not want That's us right. running in the hallways. Yep. What are you about yes. to hide that you don't want us? My kids are in that school. I have a right to come in that school. I mean, Ms. Brogan, um, I have kids in that school as well. I think you know that. But what we can do is we can have Mr. Roach address that with, uh, with Ms. Clayton um, or, or uh, our director of personnel can address that as far as the communication is concerned, which I think we've already stated. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm speaking for the board. I'm speaking for all of you all. I mean, I think the solution to our problem is to get rid of the roaches. And we're going to do everything that we can to do that. I want it to happen. I mean, I have some, I have four sons that are going to that school. I want it to happen. And I'm, I mean, I'm there with you. So, you know, I think what we need to do and what we, I mean, collectively, is I think the first problem is we have no communication. And we're starting to get some communication with, you know, with Dana here. And, uh, and the next thing that we, that we need to do is we need to discuss what we, what we can do, what we can, you know, we need to get our minds together, we need to get our heads together and see, you know, what we can do to eradicate the problem and to, um, to, to look at the various issues of cleanup, of spraying, where we're spraying. Um, if we have to bring someone in at night or someone in whenever school is not there to look at the, to look at the problem areas, we're going to do that. We're going to do everything that we can to eradicate the problem and to increase the communication at Duval, PK through 8. I promise you that. And the reason I'm promising you that, because I have kids that are going there. And I, and I appreciate you all coming to the board meeting to voice your opinions. I really do. And I think that, uh, I think we do have some answers. And, um, and I think what we need to do is, I think uh, Mr. Roach, uh, Mr. Uh, Dana Smith, and some of our people that are here, the experts, need to actually get together and see what they can do, uh, along with Ms. Clayton. And uh, I think that we can provide a solution to the problem, and I think we can get rid of the roaches. But I really appreciate you all coming. Can I ask one question? All, all these people that you're talking about inspecting, are they all certified? We will have certified people to inspect. The ones that have done it so far happen. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm just aren't. saying that if you know the people with the health department, if they're coming down, I mean, they can look at. I mean, I'm sure if you're in the health department, you're a cert you're certified. But we can also bring people if we have to. We can bring people. I mean, um, other companies in, pest management companies in to look at the problem to see if this company is actually doing what, what they're supposed to be doing, or maybe there is another there's another method. But we can do that, okay? But I mean, that I think that is that's what we have to do. Thank you. Okay. Have you, any one of you, have had roaches before in your house? Have y'all dealt with roaches in your house before? I have. Heard. All right. You should know they're not in this little area, or they're not in this little area. They're My kid area. has seen roaches run through his classroom. They're, they're not just in this little spot or this little spot. They're in every room. Roaches is in every, every room in that school. Ma'am, I'm, I'm with you, and I think everyone knows that. But we, um, we have three people that signed in to speak. And what we have to do is we have to abide by the rules, okay? Well, then I have another subject I'd like to discuss. Um, since I signed in, oh, and I speak on behalf of quite a few people here, I'm pretty sure is... We send our kids to the school, not only is it unsafe, but it has basically become a hostile environment. <laughs> yes. yes, it has. Um, we're not allowed, if you get a return phone call, you've called at least five times. Mm -hmm. Usually not the person, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're requesting to speak to. Um, they 
they, the teachers are, oh, not all, I hate to do this because it puts all of them in a general category, and they really are, but. Ms. They're Clayton, afraid of repercussions for Ms. 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 You need to let her speak. Clayton will not return a phone call. And they are using their disciplinary chain out, outside of their boundaries, above and beyond the call of duty. I mean, typical kids for simple things, as simple as not getting a meal that their parent paid for, are getting after school. At 325 a gallon, I can't afford to run over there every Tuesday because my kid chose not to have a meal or because my kid spoke in class. You know, we done these things growing up. I didn't get after school because of it. I didn't get suspended because of it. Yes, I got reprimanded. Yes, I got called down. Two, on top of that, you don't get a phone call telling you that these things are happening. You know, take a child and set them in a room, the copy room, which I'm sure most people here probably know about the size of it. Not large at all. Not really small, but basically a copper, two tables is what will fit in it. And take a child and set them in that room. If I had done this in my home, I'm pretty sure that someone would have been called on me. Oh, yeah. That's true. I, you, you know, it doesn't make it right because you're a principal. And they're disrespectful to the children, and yet they say the kids are disrespectful to them. Well, they're only given what they're getting, and they're learning by what they're being presented with. Yes. I mean, you don't take a book bag and throw it in the hallway. You don't set kids in closets, basically. You know, they learn by example, and I just don't feel that the examples over there are the kind that us, as parents, want for our children. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, take my Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Rachel, you were talking about looking at the possibility of discontinuing some of the activities food in the gym and all. Until at least when <laughs> some of the comments made here about classrooms, you know, we have snacks in classrooms, you know, like Dana made the statement there, you know, we're, we may just consider that too. We're considering everything. I think, and I think you all would not mind if we had to do some extreme measures uh, to help eliminate that that I'm sure everyone would be for, at least temporarily, uh, you know, where food uh, is during the day, different parts are it's confined to certain areas so we can clean it up. Um, we'll do everything we can, and that means everything that we know to do. And again, I can, I'm hoping the experts can help us come up with things that we need to do, including the health department, mm -hmm. to eliminate roaches, period. Go ahead. Um, I've got a, a little bit of a concern about notification to the parents um, and just notifying one or two. If it takes sending 600 letters home to 600 kids, I think they all need to be notified. Yeah, it could be done with school messenger, and I know the lady said uh, they didn't have, they didn't get a phone call. Uh, all we need is your name um, and phone number. I don't call list. I get it on my cell phone and my house phone. Anytime there's school out, after school's canceled, anything like that, I get those. He won't sign up. He won't sign up. Yeah, I can't get a card to tell me that you can stay in school or win. Or, God forbid, I'm sick. Right. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. You need to be notified, um, and I hear you clearly. I just think that school messenger is an efficient way to do that. If you're on the call list, and apparently you are, so you should get every, uh, you know, phone call that's done when we're being when we're sprayed. And I, you should, and there's no disagreement. That will occur. I have additional comment to make concerning the food. You said maybe eradicating the food source in the gymnasium. What about the food source in the cafeteria? Well, that's what I'm saying. Going back to where we can mm -hmm. confine it, and that we know where it's occurring. Uh, and can clean up there. But when you talk, what brought that on was every room might have snacks and food served in it. They do. Well, I know, but that's why we might have to take some measures to eliminate that and confine it to the cafeteria or certain places so we can manage it. Because remember, the, the, the goal is to eliminate the roaches, not try to hire 10 custodians to cover every room because we allow 
snacks in the room. So I'm trying to be efficient uh, to get the job done. Uh, and I think just like wherever it is, we need to eliminate it because what he said, there's sugar, whatever causes it, we just need to eliminate it and the best we can. It's one of the worst places that the roaches were found. Mm -hmm. okay. So now, what are you going to do? Uh, can I respond to that? Uh, we, we have a separate contract, one for the food service areas because that's where you should have your problems limited to do. But when you've got a refrigerator and, and snacks in every classroom, that's when you're expanding your problem and when you're, when you're eating everywhere, it's hard to just treat the areas that need to be treated because a roach doesn't travel very far to food or water. They're limited in the amount of space they travel. And if you can limit them to the cafeteria and the kitchen, it's much easier to keep them controlled. Right? Right. Again, we're, we're not saying just a place, but just a few places. And, and really, I don't, uh, I'm not sure this is the appropriate place to discuss it, because we could be here all night discussing where we should and shouldn't have food. But I think we're going to try, I guess my message is try to do everything we can to eliminate roaches and their sources. What about the kids that eat at 1030 and don't get home at 5 o'clock? Right. They're going to miss that little bit of snack. Right. Again, we can't, we have to figure out a way to do it. But my first goal is to get rid of the roaches. Well, how about shut the school down? Go in there and, and, and do this. We're, we're, we're apparently doing a very good job at this point, not in the past, but <laughs> what they said about the number of roaches that were found. Have so they, they checked the house and there's still and the Listen, Listen, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody can't talk at once, okay? We're going to, we had three people that signed in for delegation, and I believe, and, I, and we have heard, heard, yeah. and we have addressed the, uh, uh, everything that we need to, to look at right now. Can I ask one question? Go ahead, Tim. Uh, we're talking about finding all the food in the cafeteria. And you're also no, I didn't, I didn't say that. Wait a minute. Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, okay. If you can find, take away some of the places where they eat, that means that they're going to have to eat more in the cafeteria. And I think you just said that uh, you got a separate contract for treating the food area. So you're going to put even more kids in that and where you're treating more frequently or what? Well, when you can find the, the space that you've got a problem, it's easier to take care of. Uh, we pay more to pay for the exterminator to take care of the kitchen and the cafeteria area than we do the whole rest of the school. But when you're, when you're allowing kids to eat everywhere, the, the problem expands. Now, We've not seen that many problems in just a few classrooms. For example, the science room. I talked to the teacher today. She hasn't seen a problem for quite some time. So they're starting to eliminate those problems. But to totally eliminate them in the classrooms, you don't you don't have food and water there, and they won't stay. They'll go. They'll leave. They'll go somewhere else. They never did in my house. We have okay. Okay. One last thing and I'll stop, please. Okay, well, the last thing I would, I would like to say is, you know, they can survive on the pace of an envelope, came across the lips of Mrs. Clayton, they can survive a very long time on that. And uh, we, as parents, I think we would like to request an inspection from an independent sanitarian. And like every room inspected, because the inspection was conducted during school hours, and I know that disrupting the classrooms for that inspection probably did not happen. And that's that's the what I have to say. And okay. you know, Miss Sarah, we'll look at that. Thank we'll, you. we'll actually talk about that. We'll address that. Thank okay. you. And I and and I'll, I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys on the, on Saturday or Sundays. Could and we receive some communication on that? We that's that's what we're going to do, and that's what we've discussed. I mean, Mr. Roach has actually talked to actually told uh, Miss Lucas um, to address that the communication with the parents. And she is going to take care of that. So we're going to, we are, yes, we are going to have communication. Because I'm in there too. I mean, I'm, it's all about communication. Communication with your parents. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on now. Okay? Appreciate you all coming out tonight. And uh, if you all want to stick around, you can stick around for the rest of the, uh, of the meeting. But we're going to move to the administrative section. Mr. Roach. Um, is this where we were going to? Oh, wait a minute.
Next meeting will be on the 20th. Well, I'll tell you in a second. Two weeks from tonight. It'll be two weeks from tonight, and I'll give you the day. It's in the agenda. It'll be on the 21st. 21st. February 21st. Y'all have a great evening. See y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The questions are asked. So they want to hear the speaker. We went down there. Are you sure? Thanks. Yeah, we're set. We're set. I mean, yeah, Dotson. Dotson's been on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Who do we use for the Dotson meeting? It's on the it's on the, it's on the letterhead right of the uh, second page. True. I was looking more at the other detail, but just wanted to thank you. Uh, I thank all of y'all for your time. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thank, thank, thank you. All right, we need to go into a, uh, we have a personnel hearing. And we need to go into a special session, or executive session. Uh, discuss uh, the employment of short, long-term professional personnel at Lake County High School. So two items in executive session. The motion has been made to go into executive session. Is there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We're in executive.